So today, I'm going to share with you a mistake that I made while running my brokerage that cost me over $812,500. Now, I know that might be hard to believe, but I did the math and it kind of blew me away because this was a mistake I made early in my career as a freight broker. I started my freight brokerage back in 2003. So I think this was probably in 2004, 2005, I'm estimating. I don't remember the exact date, but let me tell you kind of a quick story and how this, why I decided to do this training. Inside the Freight Broker Bootcamp members only Facebook group, somebody asked a question today. How can I protect uh, myself from carriers stealing my shippers? right? And going direct. How can I as a broker protect myself from stealing carriers and going direct? That's what stimulated this thought process and what made me remember this mistake that I made. So let me tell you the quick story. Uh, again, it was somewhere around probably 2004, 2005. We were a young brokerage. We were growing rapidly. And I had a shipper that we had been doing a lot of business with. And we had won some really good lanes and we were moving at the time in these, there was two or three lanes in particular that we were moving about five loads a day. Okay. About five loads a day. And I remember, you know, these were short hauls. So the average load was probably about 650 bucks conservatively. They, they were not long hauls. They were short hauls. They were very regional hauls. Right. And so if you add that math up really quick, that adds up to five times 650. That's $3,250 a day in business. 650 times, well, if we do 250 work days, right? 650 times five times 250. There you go. That's $812,500. So we were doing really well with this client. We were moving a lot of freight with them because we had won some of these lanes and we had you know, we had developed a new relationship with a carrier, but they had a large fleet. They had a lot of trucks. And so we started loading them more and more. And it became where these three or four lanes that we were running, these regional lanes were pretty much exclusively dedicated to this one carrier. And we'd been running these lanes for months and everything was going well. The carrier was doing a great job. The shipper was happy. We were happy. Everybody was happy. And then all of a sudden the freight started to dry up. And all of a sudden we were not getting those shipments anymore. We weren't getting five loads a day. It went down to three loads a day. And then it went down to two loads a day. And then it went down to like one load a day. And we were still getting a little bit, but we were not getting the volume that we had previously been getting. So we reached out to the shipper and we had a conversation and we were asking them, what was the cause? What was the root of losing this freight? Was it just a downturn in the market? Was it less, you know, was it less buying from the customer? Had they routed it a different direction? Are they using another broker? What was the situation? And after quite a bit of prodding and questions, and the fact that we had a very good relationship with the shipper, they let us know that the carrier we had hauled, that we had been using for this, dedicated on these lanes, had contacted them direct and had offered them a $25 discount, or it was, I think it was around $25 discount on the rate. So they undercut our rate and went direct. And eventually we lost all of those lanes. Okay. And so the mistake that we made was that we did not have a strong no back solicitation clause built in to our freight broker contract, our broker carrier contract. Okay. So when we went back and took a look at it, we had a very weak broker uh, carrier, no back solicitation clause. It was not well written. And when we talked to our attorney and we advised our attorney of the situation, he indicated to us that it would be very difficult to pursue them because we did not define the, mo the no back solicitation clause well enough in the agreement. And it would be very difficult to try to pursue the carrier. Now we did have a basic no back solicitation clause. It was very basic, but it was just fundamental and it wasn't enough from what the attorney told us. So ultimately that mistake on my part, I was the CEO of the business. 
right? We were growing rapidly. And that mistake on my part cost me, cost my company over $812,500 a year. That's just one year. Now imagine the lifetime value of those lanes. If we'd have had those lanes for two or three or four or five years, imagine what that cost us. So multiply the 812 times two or three or four years. Now you can see the real value of this mistake. Okay. So it was a very painful mistake. It was a very expensive mistake. And so after that, what we did is we, we had rewritten the clause, right. And put it into the agreement, all, all the future contracts. And then anytime, and then uh, any new carriers would fall under those new agreements. And then as the old contracts terminated, obviously those, uh, those old contracts would fall off. And if the carriers wanted to reinitiate with us, they'd have to sign the new contract. Okay with the new clauses built in. So my point is today is that you have to learn to protect yourself. Now, I am not a lawyer. I am not here to give you legal advice. Okay, that's not my job. But what I do want to do is I want to share with you a very simple uh, way that you can protect yourself when it comes to no back solicitation. So let me pull this up really quick. And here you go. Okay. So now you should be seeing my desktop, which has an actual no back solicitation clause example. Now, once again, I want to put this disclaimer out here. And this is the reason why the top of this document, it says, this is not legal advice. I am not a lawyer. Always seek an attorney in matters of law. Okay. Understand that up front. But what I wanted you to understand is I'm going to break down this no back solicitation clause because this is the clause that I would use today if I were a broker. This is even better than the clause that we had initially and better than the version 2.0 clause that we had after we made the mistake, in my opinion. Okay. Now, what it says is it says back solicitation. Now, you would add this to your carrier broker agreement, your broker carrier agreement. You would add this as a clause to that agreement. Now it says carrier shall not solicit traffic from any shipper, consignee, or customer of broker during the term of this agreement and for a period of one year after the termination where one, the availability of such traffic first became known to the carrier as a result of the broker's efforts or two, where the traffic was first tendered to the carrier by the broker. If the carrier breaches this provision of this agreement, Broker shall be entitled to a reasonable liquidated damages and not as a penalty to a commission of 15% of the gross revenue from such traffic to the carrier for a period of 18 months. Carrier also agrees that the breach of this agreement entitles broker to be entitled to in obtain an injunction against the carrier in a court of competent jurisdiction at broker's option. Now, there's a couple key components to this, and I would highly advise that you run this by an attorney or someone that has legal, but this is the clause that I would use. Again, this is not legal advice. A couple things that are very important to this, okay? First of it, first of all, it has to have a term. So this, this, the term of this clause is for one year after the termination of the broker carrier agreement. So if they, if the carrier or the broker never terminate the agreement, then the term continues to go on. But for one year after that, okay, if they do terminate it, it still applies for one year after the termination. You cannot have a term that is perpetual. Legally, you have to set a term, okay, in order for it to be valid, right? Second of all, um, it's where the broker made, uh, if the ship, if the carrier had already been doing business with the shipper direct prior to the broker, this clause does not apply. So it does not limit the carrier from doing business with a shipper in the event that they had already been doing business with the shipper direct. Okay. So it only happens if the broker brings the carrier into this fold and they are made aware of the business through this channel. Okay. The other thing is, is this is a really important part. Uh, the breach of this provision entitles the broker to be entitled to obtain in, an injunction. So you can go to a judge, you can go to a court, and you can get what's called injunctive relief. And that's where the court will step in and force the carrier to stop doing business with that, with that shipper if you choose until 
a case has been heard until a legal case has been heard, right? So you're going to start limiting your damages, right? You're going to stop the damages through having that option built in. So this is an example of a no back solicitation clause that could save you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars by implementing it into your broker carrier agreement, right? So my mistake was I did not have a strong broker carrier agreement. The second mistake that I'm, or a strong uh, no back solicitation clause in my broker carrier agreement. And my second mistake was dedicating too much freight in these specific lanes to one carrier. I should have diversified that, but we were running five loads a day with this one carrier for one shipper. And what happened was, obviously they saw the money, obviously they saw the opportunity and they got a little greedy and they back solicited. This happens from time to time. But I can tell you, it throughout my career as a broker, it really didn't happen very often, but it did happen from time to time. And once we implemented a clause like this in our broker carrier agreement, I don't ever remember a time where it happened again. Now it could have potentially happened without us knowing, but it definitely wasn't significant. So that's my story. That's how I lost over $812,000 in my brokerage, making a huge mistake. Here's how you can help prevent this from happening to you. And again, the reason why I did this training today is because someone in our Freight Broker Bootcamp paid members only group um, and if you guys want to be a part of that, all you got to do is join Freight Broker Bootcamp and be, become a part of that training. We have a, a members only paid group where they all collaborate and come together and help each other. But I had somebody in that group ask me, how can I protect from carriers back soliciting my shippers and going direct? And so I decided to do this training today uh, to highlight the mistake that I made and how you guys can protect yourself. Um, again, here's the clause. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you found value. Um, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students, been in business over a decade, and I have personally done over $200 million as a freight broker. So again, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Do me a huge favor, wherever you're listening to this, like, comment, share, and make sure you show up every Monday at noon. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell next to it to make sure you get notified. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have an awesome day. Day.